I thought, how dare you? I'm a good mover. Yeah, I like dark. Ah, I got really like si I'm 16 year old mm. about it. I've made a list of things that I'd like to get through. Number one, uh, I perform oral sex on you. Number two, you perform oral sex on me. Number three, we do a 69, if that's what it's still called. I just fell in love with your characters. Thank They're you. just amazing. I loved it. So fresh and unique. There are so many intimate, honest scenes in this. What were your first impressions of each other? Well, I thought he's tall. Daryl came to mine and we went for a long walk and talked. And my first impression was of someone um, immensely thoughtful. That was my first impression. I mean, obviously tall and gorgeous and all of that, yeah. But the actual sort of soul impression was of, of this deep thinking, profound thinker. I felt very safe around Emma very instantly. And I think that's something you can't really work for. I think it's something that Emma just has. She was very inviting um, in terms of collaboration and she really wanted to know what I thought about this. I felt really well, like respected and encouraged and seen. And um, I felt as, as a film goes in terms of how much these two people are, are intimate and vulnerable with one another, but also as actors, the amount of relying we would have had to done with each other, it just felt super exciting. Um, that was my first, yeah. And the other thing actually that's, that I felt, that I haven't said this before, but it's really important, is that um, I didn't feel as though I was gonna have to look after Jarrell. Mm. I wasn't gonna have to mother him mm. or worry about him worrying about being younger and less experienced. I didn't feel that at all. We met and a couple of hours later, we were t two actors attending to these two people. And our, all we were thinking about was how do we make these two people really, really alive? Because yeah. we knew they had to be so bloody real, mm. realer than real, mm. you know? And they were. And yeah. the chemistry between you both is just so genuine. I think so many people would benefit from spending time with Leo Grand. Emma, out of the previous characters you've played, who would you love to see spend time with Leo? Oh, that's such a great, great question. Yeah. Well, um, well, Eleanor Dashwood. Yeah, that would be tricky, wouldn't it? Um, in her empire line with her very tightly corseted morals. Um, I don't know how well that would go. I'm not married. No. <laughs> it would be great for Alan Rickman's wife in Love Actually to, to hire Daryl, uh, uh, Leo, as a kind of, you know, some sort of rebalancing in the if equation. My expectations are not that high after 13 years of Mr. Oh, but you always love Scott. That's a very, very funny question. This could be the perfect sequel. I'm calling it. Okay, yeah. We've got to make this happen now. Okay. <laughs> um, Daryl, it must be the dream, though, getting to work with the Emma Thompson. What are your favourite Emma Thompson movies? This interview is all going to be all about me. Yes. Just want to let you Rightfully know right so. now. <laughs> Rightfully so. I thought, do you know one, one thing that moment pops out to me that didn't make it into the film, and that's a very cliche film that you did, but. Um, it's, as in, it's like, it's a big film. So the Harry Potter character you play. Oh, well, yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Trelawney. Yeah, but I just thought the joy and the, the fear and the kind of, I don't know, I thought, especially in those worlds when those characters can be so enunciated. You're only saying that because that's the only film that you're old enough to remember. <laughs> Together we shall cast ourselves into the future. I've wanted to talk to you both about your dancing, that dance scene, because I loved it. Do you enjoy dancing when you're filming? Because I would find it just so embarrassing. Is there music playing? Like, what was going on? I like a dance. I think we felt perfectly free. We had done a little rehearsal of what that dance was for the camera movement, because the camera's kind of wrapping around us at the same time. Um, but that actual dance became came quite organic. We actually just played that song in rehearsal and that was more or less the first take kind of was what you kind of see in the film. Yeah, we set it and then we mm. did it with a steady cam many times with the music. Um, and then sometimes with the music in our ears, which was kind of weird, oh, yeah. do you remember? And that was kind of a little bit odd and not, not quite so much fun. But yeah. I love dancing. I mean, I really love dancing. I give a dance party every year, which is just dancing because I love it. 
Um, so, so the song was interesting because we didn't have access. We couldn't choose a wonderful song that we loved because it's too expensive, the performing rights, etc. Mm. So we we were given a few songs to listen to and there was a sort of jazzy one and there was a kind of 1940s one, but mm. that all felt wrong for them. Mm. And then this song was just so wonderful. And when I hear it now, it just brings back mm. this sense of two people. And I think Nancy could relate to it because it was a little bit 80s you know yes, kind of the blues the little kind bit of kind of you yeah. know poppy y- yeah so she could understand it it's not like we suddenly yeah, play it's not alien for chemical it. my chemical <laughs> reaction you know yeah. or blink 8182 you know so I, like, I don't know how to dance to this, 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 this is, is in fact i'm this is traumatizing me this song is actually traumatizing me yeah exactly you know what i mean this is the moment nancy realized that leo's <laughs> terrible taste yes it got music. terrible taste and he plays something <laughs> Horrible. You both had moves. Are you aware that the internet went wild for your dancing at the Adele show? I was informed about that. I think the word that somebody used was mumsy, which I was extremely offended by. I thought, how dare you? I'm a good mover. Yeah, I like dance. Ah, oh, I got really like I'm 16 year old about it. Mumsy. <laughs> The word is iconic. The word is iconic, not mumsy. <laughs> there are nuns out there with more sexual experience than me. It's embarrassing. Do you want me to brush my teeth? I love how Nancy makes you brush your teeth because she doesn't like the smell of Mars bars. I can't be in the same room as my boyfriend when he's eating fish balls. I honestly have a tantrum when I see them in the fridge. Do you guys have any icks? Oh, that's such a good... You, I think maybe, you know, you shouldn't really be with someone who eats fish balls. Thank you. Look at Can you. you please tell him that? Gorgeous. <laughs> he could dick give fish balls. Fish balls? Fish balls from the deli. Okay. I'm a okay. badger because I don't like them, but... Oh, mm. well, my husband likes, um, you know, pickled herrings. Yeah. Can't no, cope. Absolutely Literally not. can't no. cope. They're in the fridge. Big reaction. Yeah. Don't like that. What about you? Mm. I don't really have any smells not that put me off. off. Icky. No. I mean, apart from the obvious ones. Like bad breath. Or, oh, I, yeah, I can't cope with that at all. That's hard, you know, but I even that, I don't know. Yeah. No no particular food types that I can think of. No, I, I think you're quite tolerant. To you. mm. Yeah. We'll go through that later. I think that the way somebody smells is so important. Mm. When you get a compliment saying that you smell good, it's the best it's a compliment. It's nice compliment, it is. isn't it? Mm. It's true. No, I simply don't understand why you're doing this. This to save up for our college. Oh, how wonderful. Are you really? No. <laughs> Leo Grande is really a persona and he lies about what he does for a living and everything. Have you guys ever lied on a CV when you were younger to try and get a job? I'm sort of horribly mm. honest. Yeah. It's a great way really? to be. Well, no, not really. I wish I had a really good story about, yeah, once I really lied. I feel like if I was a really cool person, an iconic, as you say, not mumsy, um, I, but I'm about to be so mumsy because I just totally would have, I would have okay. loved to be able to say, yeah, I can drive. I'm, I'm very, very good with a Maserati. Um, I can do like three point, you know, mm. wheelies and mm. everything, and I can ride horses. And then actually done it and had a horrible accident because I got it wrong. If I were a really cool person, I would have that answer. But no, I'm really like not cool. So I haven't really ever much lied because it would be a pretty damn stupid thing to do. Yes, I can fence. And then you get on set. Can That'd be like right those. Right. No, sorry. Okay. But then you get on set and they give you a fancy. <laughs> yes. A, you lose an eye, and B, you look like a twat. And then you've wasted everyone's time and you get fired. So I wouldn't recommend it. But have you ever lied? Not, not really with work. I mean, like white lies, but not, yeah. not in a sense of like. Um, I can do this. Yeah, no, not particularly. Lied about our age, lied about our sex. I don't know, our sexual proclivities. Mm. I mean, I suppose, you know, well, maybe I'll take to it. Talking to honest people, that's what we like. I've always been ashamed of my body. Your body's beautiful. I wish you could see that. That final scene when you're standing in front of the mirror is so beautiful. It was just the perfect way to end the film. How empowering and liberating did that feel? It was interesting. It was very interesting. Um, I'd made a decision about how I wanted to stand. I wanted to stand like... Um, there's a very old medieval picture by Dürer and there's another one by um, uh, an artist called Cranach um, of Eve, Adam and Eve. And Eve's just standing there. 
And they're, you know, there's odd medieval bodies, which are sort of all mm. bit strange oh, yeah, shapes. The they're not shapes ones, that yeah. we, we, we're used to. Yeah. But she's standing there with one leg slightly bent and completely relaxed. And I thought that's how Nancy should stand. And I, I realised, of course, that I had never, ever, ever stood in front of a mirror completely relaxed, mm. ever. I always, since since girlhood, had done something to make myself look like the thing I thought I ought to look like. Nancy doesn't do that because she's way past that, way, way past it. She's in a space that she's never been in before, which is she's not looking at her body and saying, I like my body, I don't like my body. For me, it wasn't a moment of she's not, yeah, she's not judging it, but she's not particularly going, what a great body. It's not that, it's not that kind of empowerment. It's just finding herself in a safe space on her own and knowing that she can access her body's pleasure centers. And that's why it's relaxed and that's why she smiles because she's been given such a gift by this young man. But it's a gift that she can keep. He, she doesn't need to keep seeing him to access it. You know, it's such a beautiful gift. It's, and it's a great freedom and, um, so that for me is what I was trying to achieve, but for, on a personal level, it was very hard. It was just very hard because I judged my body very harshly, um, like people do, as we're taught to do. We're taught, all taught to do that. We were speaking about earlier how women don't talk about pleasure and how it's sort of frowned upon to talk about these things. What this film does is it addresses that and I think it's really important. Did you have conversations with women in preparation for this about female pleasure? I've had lots of conversations over the years about female pleasure because, it, you know, obviously, so examine it. Really, it was a question of imagining not ever having had pleasure. You know, that's what's the, the, that's what the, the, the dialectic between these two people is so fascinating. I mean, she's never had pleasure and Leo has always somehow understood it and accepted it. Mm. And that's what's so mm. remarkable about him is that, you know, when he describes that scene with his mum coming in and there we were, we were just exploring each other. Mm. He's going, that's a perfectly innocent thing to do. And it's like a scene, a pre-lapsarian scene. It's before the fall of Adam and Eve. It's like an innocent enjoyment of, you know, but we've been fed this myth that the apple, you eat the apple and then you have sex and then you're evil. And every, you get cast out of the garden and you never get to come back and then you... All you get to do is have children get ill and die. That's the story. That's the story in our lives that comes from Christianity. You know, it's a really tough, brutal story. And, you know, Leo seems to me to be kind of innocent. Mm -hmm. And yet his mother, who's Catholic, interprets this as the ultimate sin. And, and he's dead to her instead of, what an amazing mm -hmm. young man. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's able to give him, I suppose. She says, there's nothing yeah. disappointing about you. You're a marvel. I just fell in love with you both in this. Thank you so much for talking to me and huge congrats. It was absolutely brilliant. I can't wait for everyone to see it. Thank you Thank very you. much. We're thrilled that you like it.